In this video, we are going to solve the system of simultaneous equations by using Kramer's rule. So, Kramer's rule is one of the methods of solving simultaneous equations in matrix algebra. So, out here I have taken a system of simultaneous equations consisting of any number of equations and any number of variables. Remember, if this n out here takes the value of 4, then it implies that there are 4 equations. If it is 5, there are 5 equations and so on. Similarly, if n out here takes the value of 4, then there will be 4 variables in the equation. If it is 5, there will be 5 variables and so on. Now, n can take any values. d1, d2, dn are constant terms. Now, we can arrange the given system of simultaneous equation in matrix form. This is known as the coefficient matrix. If we multiply the coefficient matrix with the variable vector, we get back the equation. I have already done this while solving the system of simultaneous equation by matrix inversion. For reference, you can uh, go and check again. Now this vector out here is the constant terms vector. Let us name the coefficient matrix by A, the variable vector by X, and the constant term vector by D. Let us see what other steps involves in finding the solution to the system of simultaneous equations by Kramer's rule. After arranging the system of simultaneous equations in matrix form in this manner and naming the coefficient matrix, the variable vector and constant terms vector by A, X and D respectively. The first steps is finding the determinant of the coefficient matrix or of matrix A. In order to find the value of the first variable x1, that is this, we need to replace the elements of the first column in matrix A by constant terms d1, d2, dn and name it as matrix A1. So we need to replace the element present in the first column that is these elements by the elements present in the constant term vector that is these elements and we name it as matrix A1. So this is a new matrix. The resulting matrix is this. As you can see the first column now contains the elements of the constant term vector. Now why are we replacing the elements present in the first column by the constant term vector? The reason is that as you can see out here all these elements are present in the first column in matrix A. If we look at the first element then it tells us that this coefficient is uh, attached to the first variable present in the first equation. The second coefficient tells us it is attached to the first variable present in the second equation. And the last one tells us that it is attached to the first variable present in the nth equation. So all the variables in the first column is associated with the first variable. After we got the matrix A1, the next thing we need to do is we need to find the determinant of matrix A1. In order to obtain the value of variable x1, we divide the determinant of matrix A1 by the determinant of the original matrix. So this is how we get the value of the first variable. So here is the formula. Now in order to find the value of the second variable x2, that is this, we need to replace the elements of the second column in matrix A that is we need to replace these elements by the elements present in the constant term vector that is d1, d2, dn that is these elements and name it as matrix A2. 
so this is our resulting matrix you can see out here the elements in the second column has been replaced by the constant the term vector after doing this we need to find the determinant of matrix a2 finally in order to obtain the value of the second variable x2 we need to divide the determinant of the matrix a2 by the determinant of the original matrix so this is our formula next in order to find the value of the third variable x3 that is this value out here we will replace the element present in the third column of matrix a by the elements present in the constant term vector that is these elements and we will name the new matrix as a3 that is this you can see the third column out here has been replaced by the elements of the constant term vector after completing we will find the determinant of the new matrix a3 and finally in order to obtain the value of the third variable x3 we simply divide the determinant of matrix a3 by the determinant of the original matrix a so this is our formula so finally in order to find the value of the n yet variable the n yet variable can be any uh, number it can be the 10 variable the 6 variable the 12 variable depending on how many variables are there in the system of simultaneous equations now in order to find the n yet variable we need to replace the elements of the n yet column in matrix a that is this one by the constant terms d1 d2 dn that is this and name is name it as a n so this is the resulting matrix as you can see the n yet column has been replaced by the constant term vector elements now after that we need to find the determinant of a n matrix and in order to obtain the values of the n yet variable the value of the n yet variable sorry we simply divide the determinant of the a n matrix by the original by the determinant of the original matrix so this is how we obtain as you can see the steps are very simple first you need to find the determinant of the coefficient matrix after that in order to find any uh, variable we need to replace the column in which that variable is present by the constant term vector elements and then give it a name and after that we need to find its determinant and finally in order to obtain the value of that variable we need to divide the determinant of the new matrix by the determinant of the original matrix so this is how it is uh, found let us solve a system of simultaneous equations consisting of two equations and two variables so in the solution first of all we need to write what is given they have given us system of simultaneous equations these are the two equations what is to be found the values of x1 and x2 that is the two variables in the system of simultaneous equations we need to arrange the system of simultaneous equations in matrix form so this is the coefficient matrix what are the coefficients they are 3 minus 2 we must be very careful with the sign attached to the coefficient in the equation next to 1 what are the variables the variables are x1 and x2 what are the constant terms they are 6 and 11 let us name the coefficient matrix variable vector and constant term vector by a x and d respectively next we need to find the determinant of the coefficient matrix so this is a second order determinant we need to multiply 3 times 1 minus 2 times minus 2 3 times 1 is 3 minus times minus is plus 2 times 2 is 4 so determinant a is 7 in order to find the value of x1 we need to replace the elements in the first column by the elements present in 
the constant term vector. Let us do 6, 11, minus 2, 1. As we can see out here, the first column has been replaced by the elements of the constant term vector. In order to find the value of variable x2, we need to replace the second column of the Gaussian matrix by the elements of the constant term vector. Let us do. The first column remains as this. That is 3, 2. The second column will be replaced by the constant term vector elements. That is 6 and 11. Next, we need to find uh, the determinant of these two uh, matrices. Let us first find the determinant of matrix A1. 6 times 1 minus 11 times minus 2. 6 times 1 is 6. Minus times minus is plus. 11 times 2 is 22. 6 plus 22 is 28. Next, the determinant of matrix A2. 3 times 11 minus in between. 2 times 6. 3 times 11 is 33. Minus 2 times 6 is 12. 33 minus 12 equals 21. So we have found the determinant of matrix A1 and A2. In order to obtain the value of variable x1, we need to uh, divide the value of the determinant A1 by the value of the determinant of the original matrix. So determinant of matrix A1 is 28 divided by the value of the original determinant is 7. Determinant of matrix A2 is 21. The determinant of the original matrix is 7. So 28 divided by 7. 7, 3, 21. 7, 4, 28. 7 times 3, 21. Finally, you will write down x1 is equal to 4 and x2 equal to. Now, if you substitute the value of x1 equal to 4 and x2 equal to 3, in either of the two equations, you will find that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So in this manner, a common solution of x1 and x2 is found for this given system of simultaneous equations. The system of simultaneous equations is solved by Kramer's rule in this manner.